Hello, Ryan here, and welcome to Star Citizen Sunday. This is a weekly show which covers all of the news from the week just past. Be sure to subscribe if you like what you see, and let's get on with it. So this week, Jump Town and Nine Tails are back. The Crusader Spirits Q&A is here. Plus, we get to check out the latest images of the 600i rework. So Star Citizen Live returned this week. And this week, there are multiple guests elaborating further on what we heard during CitizenCon. First up are two of the ship team developers talking about the new vehicles that debuted at the event, like the Crusader Spirit and Grey Cat STV. The Spirit stats were a bit of a blunder to begin with, which have now been rectified on the website and they should all be accurate. But the first question is, why another bomber with the A1? And they say, like with anything in Star Citizen, they don't just want to offer one choice. They want a range of options for all different types of gameplay. And for the Spirits in particular, they knew they wanted variants and found that the bomber was a good option with the Hercules already part of the Crusader lineup. The next question is, is the bombing mechanic done and completed? And it is certainly not done. There is still a lot of other systems that will affect bombing like ship armor or armor in general, components and such. Plus, all the stats are subject to change continuously for the time being. Bomb safety ranges for activation and radius are not quite where they want them to be, or they're not working as intended, so they will need a little bit more tuning. Now, they moved on to ground vehicles with the STV in mind, and they just said our ground vehicle speed's still in flux. And they say changes again in the future are certainly possible, as they say. All stats are subject to change. But there is a new tyre and vehicle handling model coming, and so the speeds were changed for that very thing. Hopefully this means that the wheeled vehicle physics changes are coming with 318, as they actually do look night and day different to what they are now. So fingers crossed we can get that for that patch, and it will make driving wheeled vehicles a lot more fun and realistic. Now the next question was, how did it pan out for the new mining vehicle vote with the John Crew Pick a Ship Challenge? And they said RSI won, as we all know, and they will need to do a sign-off for the design notes and then pass that to the teams who will work on it, and then they will allocate resources to work on it when the time is right. The next question was regarding the master modes, and just basically it was a mixed reaction, what is going on with master modes, and they did say that there was still a hell of a lot more to be explained, but they didn't get the time in the video to delve even deeper. And so when they do address it again, which hopefully will be sometime soon, they will go over the plans for all the ship types, not just combat ships, but for all ship types on how master modes will affect them. So it does sound like there is still a hell of a lot more to, to learn for, about master modes and what they will actually provide, but we didn't really get as much detail as I think they wanted to give out. Now, the next question is, what can you tell us about the Origin 600i rework? So they have done a high level concept pass and reworked the floor plans to remove the wasted space, and it is just about waiting for a slot to start work. So they have not yet started actual production of the ship, they have just completed the reconcepting. Now, the interior is changing quite a bit, and we actually saw some great new concept images of how it's going to look. First up, we got to see the crew quarters split deck, and layout-wise, the middle section is the section that changed, so the back half got the rework and the middle section got the crew quarters. Next, we got to see the bar area, which is at the back of the touring module, and it still has that big glass window. It does look very fancy. We got to see the cargo lift area next, and this lift does fit a Nova tank. They say there are three decks to the 600i now, and the bottom deck can hold this tank, which is pretty crazy. Jared did say that it would be nice to have an Origin tank, as it would look more fitting for the 600i compared to the Nova, which I certainly do agree with. Having an Origin-style tank, I think, would look pretty damn cool. So let us hope that that gets picked up. That was actually just Jared talking off the cuff. Nothing has been confirmed or solidified with that idea. But anyway, moving on, the main elevator only goes to the outside, while the small lift to the side goes between the decks. Here we can see the armory, and do note that the grey armor items on the table will be possible when they move all items to being physical. Right now, they're just boxes that when you loot them they get dropped on the floor as boxes they are moving to physical armor not just personal armor and so these pieces of armor like helmets chest pieces arms and so on will be physical they will be able to be placed on tables on surfaces inspected but it was also mentioned that the 600i will have multiple weapon racks and suit locker space but the armory is only for the exploration model from here we got to see the middle deck where there is a storage room for all of your stuff which will leave this lift free for you so you could bring stuff up, store, put it to the side, keep it there for safekeeping and then still use the lift. 
Now the touring version we can see has this really nice foyer and a swimming pool and water feature and sauna steam room. Very, very fancy. Both variants have two personal lifts to the ground, but only the Explorer module has the vehicle elevator apparently, while the small circular elevator now being exclusively for transport between decks and not to the ground. Now, Jared did say that there will be a 600i segment during Intergalactic Aerospace Expo or inside Star Citizen. I think he mentioned both. I'm not sure if it's one or the other or both will be. Plus, talking about some other ships too, so do expect to see more on that. But the 600i is looking pretty incredible. Again, only concept that still needs to be created in-engine. But I am very much looking forward to seeing more of this when they get around to showing it off. Now, from here, they spoke to a few programmers, talking more about who they are, what they do, and, and what they're doing. First question being is just simply, what is a programmer, and what do you do? Now, they turn designers' ideas into something that would work in the engine, and make the tools that the level and content designers use to create the gameplay. The next question was, persistent entity streaming must be wreaking havoc right now for programmers, is that correct? And they say, yes, a lot of the gameplay teams are having to tweak a lot of their work for persistent entity streaming. Next question, how is hull scraping going? And they are now just putting the finishing touches on and bug fixing, which is very exciting to hear. And the final question is about resource management. What can you tell us? And they say that there is a lot of gameplay opportunities for using the resource network. And this programmer specifically was looking at an old prototype for repairing a vending machine, almost to the scale of a vending machine simulator, which is just a very old exploratory idea for resource management with the intention of making it as complex as possible to see how far they could take it to then bring it back to obviously fun. So they are taking this prototype and seeing how they could fit that into the verse to work alongside every other game system. Now I really love the idea of having to fix or repair items like vending machines as kind of small introductory missions to the or just general missions to the resource network system. We know that CIG are intending on engineering jobs around space stations and landing zones and basically everywhere. And with the resource network being designed for not just ships and vehicles, but homesteads and landing zones, it does sound like we could be using this system for missions for engineers in all manner of locations. And I really love the idea of just flying off to a space station or flying down to a landing zone and going in and fixing something and getting paid for it. Sounds like a nice day-to-day -day kind of way of making cash. Uh, it was also mentioned that in regards to having all systems working together, the containers for the resource management system, like fuel and power and so on, use the same underlying logic as the cargo containers with the new cargo factor. So it all works together systemically. So very important that they took the time to build these systems so they can all interconnect. And hopefully we'll start seeing that rolling out very, very soon. Now to finish with, Inside Star Citizen returns next week with a look at the planning stages for the new underground facilities, which have moved directly into production now. So they will speak about how they plan out the scope for work for these new locations. And they will also, on that episode, talk about the new Gen 12 improvements that are coming with 318 and beyond. So sounds very interesting, especially a look at what to expect with Gen 12 for 318, as it does sound like this will bring the performance gains that they've been talking about. But I was also pretty blown away by the underground facility redo during CitizenCon. So can't wait to hear what their plans are for getting these into the game. And hopefully we're not waiting too long, although they do look quite epic to bring in. Jared said he's unsure what the subject for Star Citizen Live is next week, but we will hear more on Tuesday most likely, or sometime throughout the week. So that was Star Citizen Live. Quite a decent episode, but let's move on. So also this week, the Crusader Spirit got its Q&A, answering our questions regarding this new triple lineup of ships. Jump Town and Nine Tails Lockdown are back, with the schedules available on the website for those interested in taking part. And finally, a schedule of upcoming bar citizens is available on the website as well. So if you are interested in hanging out with other citizens, do check out the link below. So that brings us to the end of the show. If you do enjoy my content, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. Also, I am able to do this thanks to my very generous patrons and channel members. If you appreciate what I do and would like to help make it even better from as little as $1 a month, all of the links are provided below.